Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alfis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to play your Super Nintendo and your Super Famicom games on your PSP. If you are new to the channel, do click the subscribe button and help us reach our goal of getting 1,000 subscribers. Thank you. The Super Famicom, also known as the Super Nintendo in North America and in Europe, is a 16-bit 4th generation home video game console developed by Nintendo. The Super Famicom was released in 1990 and is a successor to the popular Famicom, also known as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System or NES. It was discontinued in 2003 and there was a total of 1,757 games that were created for the system. Some popular games for the system include Super Mario World, Donkey Kong Country, Mario Kart, Star Fox, F-Zero, Final Fight and many more. The Super Famicom is the 10 most sold home video game console in history selling over 49 million units worldwide. In this video, I will show you how you can play your Super Famicom and Super Nintendo games on your PSP. This method is super easy to install and as always, I will go through the installation guide, in-game setting config and some of my recommendation game for the system. This method will work with all PSP model running on custom firmware. If you are not on custom firmware, do click the link on the top right or the first link in the description to see how you can install custom firmware on your PSP. This method is safe and easy to install. Alright, use the second link in the description to download SNES for PSP. The file will be in zip format so you will need 7-zip or WinDRA to extract the file. Here I have downloaded it onto my desktop. Use 7-zip or WinDRA to unzip the file. Here I am using WinDRA. Simply select the file and drag it onto your desktop. Now go ahead and delete the zip file since we won't be needing it anymore. Next, insert your Pro memory card onto your computer. My memory card is H drive but yours could be different. Next, open up the PS3 folder, then open up the game folder. Copy the SNES for PSP folder onto the game folder in your Pro Duo memory stick. Open up the folder, inside you will see a ROM folder. This is where we will put our Super Famicom and SNES backup ROMs. I've included a ROM hack in the folder for you to check out. If you have more ROMs, paste it onto this folder. ROMs are digital backup copies of your physical games. Super Famicom and Super Nintendo ROMs will have either SMC or SFC file format. I can tell you where to get the ROMs from. You can either use a dumper to dump the file from the original cartridge or you can just do a simple Google search for Super Famicom ROMs. Here I have some Super Famicom and Super Nintendo ROMs. I also have some Super FX and Super FX2 games to test out. Select the ROMs, copy and paste it onto your ROMs folder. Once this is done copying, go ahead and safely eject your Pro Duo memory stick from your PC. Insert your Pro Duo memory stick onto your PSP. Turn on your PSP and as always, run the Pro Fast Recovery to ensure that we are back on custom firmware. Give it a few seconds and let it do its thing. Now that we are back on custom firmware, Let's run the SNES 9 XTYL. Once it loads, it will take you to the ROM list. These are the list of ROMs that we have transferred over. Let's load one of my favorite beat em up game, Captain Commandos. Released in 1995 after being ported over from the arcade, the game is set on a futuristic version of Metro City, which is the same setting as Capcom other beat em up game Final Fight. Set in 2026, Captain Commando and his three companions rise up to fight the crime from planet Earth and around the galaxy. In this game, players move towards each stage defeating enemies that get into their way, while avoiding traps that may be thrown by the enemy before eventually fighting the boss awaiting for them at the final area of the stage. The game consists of a total of 9 stages and it is definitely a fun one to play. Pressing the home button will take you to the menu. Here there are several menus and configurations such as the video and sound settings which you can toggle around using the L and R trigger button. Play around with the setting to see what works for you. Let's turn on the FPS so that we can see the immediate performance. Press button up to change to yes and press circle to confirm. Press X to return back to the game. The FPS will be shown on the top right. For this game, it's running on 60 FPS. Just perfect. Everything looks as per normal. Music and videos are in sync. Controls are responsive. Let's do save state. Press the home button to return back to the menu. Press the R button to go to the load and save section. Scroll down to save state and press circle. Next, select a slot and press circle to save this game onto that slot. After saving, it will go back to the game. To load the saves, press the home button and it will return you back to the menu. Scroll up to load state. Select the state and press circle to load the save. Now we are back at where we last saved. To load a new game, 
press the home button to return back to menu. Press L trigger to scroll to game. Next, use the D-pad to scroll down to load new game. The game list will appear. Select the game and press circle to load the game. Let's play another SNES exclusive game, the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Fighting Edition, which was released in 1995. Unlike the previous Power Ranger video game, which had the player controlling the Rangers, in this game you control the Giant Zord. There are a total of 9 fighters in the Fighting Edition. The character available comes from the TV show 2nd and 3rd season. Only the Thunder Megazord and the Mega Tiger Zord are selectable in the story mode, and the rest will be fought throughout the course of the game. Another popular game to check out for the SNES is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Turtle in Time. Released in 1982, this is a port over version from the arcade which mainly based on the 1987 TMNT animated series. In this game, player get to choose which of the 4 Ninja Turtles that they get to control, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello or Raphael. Each character has his own strength and weaknesses that will eat you throughout the game. Another interesting superhero game to check out is The Tick. Released in 1984 for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, it is based on the comic book and the Fox animated series. Despite being another typical side-scrolling game, this game is very funny and something for you to check out. There are a total of 44 levels in this game, which can make the game feel a little repetitive. If you grew up watching cartoon in the 90s, you probably remember The Mask. This is a side-scrolling game that was released in 1985. The game is loosely based on the comic book, TV series and movie that stars Jim Carrey in 1984. In this game, player have to navigate through his apartment outside and inside the bank, local parks, inside the prison and finally to the nightclub. The must have many special moves such as the mallet, guns, horns which can be used to fight off his evil nemesis. This game is not easy but it's definitely fun to play. Next, let's test out some Super FX games. Super FX games are games with special chips in the cartridge which helps to render 3D polygon and advanced 2D effect. There are two types of Super FX games, the Super FX and the Super FX 2 which is a more demanding game to render. We will turn on the FPS counter so we can monitor the game render performance. Let's test out a popular Super FX game, Star Fox. The game is playable but it runs a little slow at only about 26 to 30 FPS only, which is about half of the normal speed. Next, let's test out Dead Racer. This game will not even load. It's a no-go on Dead Racer. This is the Track FX. The game is able to load but it's only running about 12 to 20 FPS. The game is playable but the audio and gameplay is rather slow. Let's test out the Super FX2 games. Here we have Super Mario World 2, Yoshi Island. This game is playable running about 46 to 59 FPS. The audio and video is insane but slightly slow but totally playable. The last game that we will test will be Doom. This is running very slow running about 12 to 20 FPS on this simulator. I totally won't recommend playing this game on this simulator. You are better off playing it on the Game Boy Advance version on the PSP. Click the link on the top right to see how you can install the Game Boy Advance game on your PSP. And there you go guys, that's how you play your Super Famicom and Super Nintendo games on your PSP. For more PSP tutorial, I've created a PSP emulator playlist in the description below. And as always, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. With that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and stay safe everybody.